We learn about compass errors in both private and instrument training. We memorize acronyms like ANDs and UNOs to help remember how the compass can be off and what to do about it. But it all gets pretty abstract, especially if we're more used to flying with modern avionics and don't pay too much mind to the magnetic compass. Let's visualize these compass errors in a way that makes a real impression on our minds. To be clear, we're working with the traditional wet compass like in our 172, which will have all the errors we're talking about. First, let's discuss magnetic dip. Because of how the compass is designed and the way the Earth's magnetic field works, the compass dips downwards towards the ground when we bank our wings, thus tilting the airplane. Sometimes we learn that this magnetic dip is caused by the plane turning, in other words, changing heading, but this isn't strictly true. Here, we're aligned with magnetic north on the ground on runway 36 with the compass pointing north. We're going to turn first to the right and notice the compass heading increases from 0 to about 10 degrees the way it should act in a right turn. Next, we're going to turn back to the left and the compass heading decreases through 0 to 330 again the way it should. So there's no magnetic dip in turns on the ground because the wings aren't banking. This is why when you're doing pre-takeoff instrument checks and doing these turns, the compass should indicate turns in the same direction you're moving. Now, let's take it up in the air. Once again, we're aligned with runway 36 with due magnetic north indicated on the compass, but this time we're 100 or so feet in the air. When we made a right turn on the ground, the compass showed our heading increasing towards 10 degrees, but up here, it shows a decrease or a turn in the opposite direction followed by it slowly beginning to follow the turn in the correct direction. Turning from a north heading, the compass heading lags the actual heading. When we turn back to the left, the compass again initially shows an increase in heading as if we're turning right, and then begins to lag our actual heading. By the way, we get comments sometimes about maneuvering so close to the ground. This is, of course, a simulator. Don't try to do any of these things in an aircraft without maintaining proper terrain separation. We're close to the ground to make the heading relationships with the runways clearer. Let's do the same exercise, only now we're lined up with runway 18, pointing to magnetic south. When we make a turn to the right, the compass shows an increase in heading, which is correct, but it jumps quickly to more than 30 degrees of change, even though we've barely broken off from runway centerline. Turning from a south heading, the compass leads the actual heading. As we continue the turn, the compass will begin to slow down and allow our actual heading to catch up with it, which you can see by comparing the compass heading with our actual heading indicated on the directional gyro below. The two headings meet up when we turn through west. Even in a bank turn, the compass doesn't exhibit any dip errors when on a west or east heading. Continuing the turn, the compass continues slowing down and now is lagging the actual heading on the DG. In order to roll out on a north heading, we need to undershoot the north heading on the compass by about 20 or 30 degrees. So when the compass reads about 340, we begin a rollout. At wings level, we see ourselves on a north heading having undershot the rollout. This is how we get the memory aid undershoot north overshoot south, UNOS, UNOS. Let's look at the other compass error now, acceleration and deceleration errors. We're airborne, now pointed at magnetic west. When we speed up and down, the compass will swing to the side, for the same reason our heads move forward and backwards in acceleration and deceleration. First, we'll pitch up and slow down. The compass shows a reduction in heading, indicating a left turn towards the south, even though we haven't turned. Now look out, we're going to pitch down to accelerate. The compass shows a turn the other way, towards the north. When we accelerate, we show a north turn. When we decelerate, we show a south turn. Accelerate north, decelerate south, ands. This error is not due to magnetic dip. It has nothing to do with the wings banking or not. To prove it, here we are on the ground, the new runway, 27, pointed again at magnetic west. When we give it full power and accelerate, we see the same error, a turn towards the north. When we hit the brakes and decelerate, we see a turn towards the south, same errors. Finally, these errors don't take place when pointed to the north or south. Here it is on runway 36, accelerating or decelerating doesn't cause a turn to be shown on the compass. Why? Well, even though momentum effects are still taking place like they do on our swaying heads, the position of the compass bars inside the instrument cause it to just sway up and down on a north heading, not side to side like when on a west or east heading. So this is a little visualization of the ANDs and UNOS memory aids. Hopefully when you remember them, you have a bit more insight into why they're happening thanks to training like this from Flight Insight, which you can see more of at our site linked here and in the description.